Topic 5.2 introduces the ideas of rotational kinetic energy and thermal energy to our studies. These are part of the larger block five, which addresses the work energy theorem, which states mathematically that the total work done on a system by external forces is equal to the change in the total energy of the system. For us in physics 100, the energy of a system can consist of six different terms. The first, translational kinetic energy, K sub T. The second, rotational kinetic energy, K sub R. The third, thermal energy, E, therm. The fourth, gravitational potential energy, U sub G. The fifth, spring potential energy, U sub SP. And the sixth, E, other, which might be due to energy sources, due to chemical, electrical, or nuclear effects, or anything not related to the first five terms that appear in the equation. When we apply the work energy theorem to a problem, what we wanna do is see how the total work done by external forces that act on the system give rise to changes to these different forms of energy that are within the system. To calculate the work done by an external force, we can use our definition of work and integrate the external force that an outside agent A exerts on our system B with respect to a differential displacement vector that describes the point of application of where the force acts on the system. If that force causes purely rotational motion about a fixed axis of rotation, that force can create a torque on the system, which can then be used to figure out how much work that force does due to the rotational motion of the system about the axis of rotation. In topic 5.2, we want to study the rotational kinetic energy term and the thermal energy term in more detail. Rotational kinetic energy of an object that has moment of inertia i in angular speed omega is given by the equation 1 half i omega squared. And if the system is rotating with an initial angular speed omega i, and then it evolves over time and rotates with a final angular speed omega f, the change in rotational kinetic energy is just the difference in its final rotational kinetic energy related to its initial rotational kinetic energy. Thermal energy can be created when two objects interact with each other via kinetic friction forces. And the change in the thermal energy of the system can be found by multiplying the magnitude of the kinetic friction force that exists between the two objects A and B by the corresponding displacement that the system undergoes while that kinetic friction force acts. We have a number of learning outcomes that topic 5-2 addresses. So as you move through the material, refer back to these and see if you can make a connection between the outcomes and what you're learning and understanding. But to get us started, here's a warm-up question which asks which of the following statements about kinetic energy is true. And remember, kinetic energy has two forms. Translational kinetic energy, symbolized by K sub T, and rotational kinetic energy, symbolized by K sub R. So statement A, an object can have either rotational or translational kinetic energy, not both. Statement B, an object can have non-zero kinetic energy, even if its center of mass is not moving. In statement C, change in kinetic energy cannot be negative since it involves the square of the speed. Think about those three statements, select the one that's true, and we'll get back with the solution with the next video.